something I found myself slipping into uh, on this trip, like a kind of uh, a way of going, way of moving, is uh, not so much as I've always done, which is trying to cover you know, like long distances, get through the locks, you know, eight, ten miles a day, which in canal life is a good distance. I'm doing more sort of four, five, six miles and then just stop in for the day and I might stay two days or even three days in a spot and, and just chill just enjoy this weather and and relax read a book binge watch a uh, long way round or long way down for the 13,000th millionth time yeah. of Aslan and the Gent. Have you seen their travels before? Well, did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more? Sold up downsides for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. Now approaching the area I moored up at all those years ago at Hungerfield. Sat in a deck chair on the towpath with my washing hanging out to dry. Absolutely perfect. That was where the whole narrow boating lifestyle, especially the summer lifestyle, clicked into place and I knew I'd made the right choice. I would say right by where that blue boat is. Well, oh, look at that. There's a bike on the tug deck. A magical spot indeed. Quite magnificent. Bridge 37 and about two miles to Newbold on Avon.
Yeah. You're right. Very good. What a gorgeous boat. The entrance to Brinklow Marina. And what an entrance. around a mile and a quarter to Newbold on Avon. Before arriving at Newbold, however, there is the fearsome 250 yard Newbold Tunnel. These moorings are spectacular. Very jealous. Very envious. And I'm not one usually given to envy of uh, what other people have. But a, a private mooring. That's, uh, that's like a state of Nirvana. Bridge 44 and New Bold Tunnel is about half a mile. There were many bridges along this little section here as it goes from Bridge 44 to 48. But they'll have all been knocked down over the years. James's fuel station. £1.15 a litre. Well, that's definitely come down in price. I don't remember this being here back in 2017. These little bridges, these little arms, they're leftovers from the old twisty winding route that the Oxford Canal used to take before it was shortened in the 1820s. The Oxford Canal used to be 15 miles longer than it is today. The alterations were made in an attempt to compete with the Grand Union Canal Company, which provided a more direct route to Birmingham. In we jolly well go. The moorings for New Bowl on Avon are just after the tunnel. Whether there'll be a space or not, I'm really not sure. It's probably quite a popular spot, but never mind, if not, 
I shall go on a bit further. Or as I said earlier, all the way to rugby. The pub mooring. But it's in a bit of a dodgy spot in terms of a narrow bend with a bridge right after it. Hmm. There they are, but under a tree. I'm not a huge fan of mooring under trees, if the truth be known. More to do with your roof getting covered in sap and leaves and twigs and all kinds of things, rather than them blowing down in a storm. But that can and does happen, of course. This boat is leaving just as I turned up. That's a stroke of luck, isn't it? As soon as I turn up, the boat in front is going. I'll wait for him to pull off, and then I'll nick his spot. Well, the canal gods uh, smiled down on me today. I'm told that not only is there a co-op here, there's also a rubbish point. You definitely get a, a better sense of canal life when you don't do so much distance. Quite liberating, really. Don't know why I didn't do it sooner. That's disposed of. Yeah, the old barley mow. Bit of an old uh, English thing. Farmer barley mow. <laughs> ah, them were the days. And right next to it is the Barley Barn. Rivals. Was wondering for a moment if I'd been here before. Um, but no. That's what I'm looking for. Well, that's me good for supplies for probably four days now. Nice seeded bread. Gonna have cheese and onion sandwiches. Always a good fallback position. I don't know if it's the weather or you know the area or whatever, but this is the first time in quite a while I've felt sort of uh, continuous cruisy again. Um, I mean, even when I finished uh, filming and editing season ten, um, I'm going to keep continuous cruising. Uh, not filming, but just milling about on the canal uh, through the winter. Uh, I mean, the past few years come winter time, uh, my default sort of position has been to dive for the nearest mooring, um, which is always nice, but no. The first two years, I was, uh, yeah, I was on the canal uh, 12 months a year. So it's, it's nice to uh, get back to that. It takes no real effort. I mean, you've got the usual uh, walking miles and miles, and but that's what keeps you fit. Otherwise, you start bunging on weight, like I was. <laughs> Just had a torrential downpour, uh, even though the Met Office weather app 
says it's glorious sunshine. Uh, looks to be brightening up though. So you really cannot go by the Met Office weather app. Incompetence doesn't even cover it. Approximately four and a half miles today to the three locks at Hill Morton. Along the way, we'll be passing through the outskirts of the town of Rugby. After the three locks at Hill Morton, I'll be travelling possibly another half to one mile and mooring up. I've noticed a trend in YouTube comments over well over the years and it goes along the lines of that if I have a shave then you look well Kev canal life obviously suits you and uh, you look younger healthier but if I don't have a shave for a couple of days you know get the old uh, get the old manly growth then uh, are you okay Kevin getting worried you don't look well <laughs> I mean it's all superficial if I was to whip this off now you know <laughs> think, Woo, you look great Kevin you can't win you know but uh, shaving is an absolute pain in the proverbial and something I try to avoid I don't like doing it daily I don't have to do it daily I don't have some irate boss saying have a shave get a haircut I have, uh, I have viewers to do that for me. <laughs> I love you all. Another part of the original Oxford windy course. It's a bit narrow here now. I sort of remember, uh, I think I remember this bridge. Yeah, nice and pretty. Rugby, of course, famous for rugby. Coming into the outer reaches of rugby now. And a good selection of moorings here. One of those occasional instances where you have towpath and off towpath moorings. With facilities that look to be closed or boarded up. A viewer here, and uh, this dog is called Aslan. Nice to meet you, and says he's been waiting to meet me for three years.
my might, Darth Vader. Oh, heck. There's no room for him to pass on my side, but there's loads of room on his side, and he's kept coming. He said, oh, I always meet people at this bridge. So I said, the thing is, there's plenty of room to pass on your side, but uh, no room for you to pass on my side. And he went, oh, uh, oh sorry. Ah, dear, oh, dear. Just a bit of forward planning, you know? That's all you need. Think about a minute ahead when you're on the other side of the bridge. Where are you going to go? Something about a banana. I have one every day in the morning and uh, keeps, uh, keeps all the intestines and everything sort of lubricated and regular. For me, constipation is a uh, group of stars in the cosmos. Ah, this place I remember very, very well. This was the place of the Boat Tuba's Summer Barbecue, back in 2017. That's where I sampled my first ever vegetarian sausage, courtesy of David Johns. It was a bit burnt, but, you know, the best uh, barbecue sausages are always burnt, aren't they? Spoke for choice with Armco here. But I'm heading for Hill Morton and it's three locks. Now around three quarters of a mile to Hill Morton Locks. That wind's picking up, and just wait for this boat. Bridge 69, dude! Oh, 
brightened up a bit, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's lovely ahead. I know, I'm just behind into the sides, is it? Yeah. There's one thing that sets us British apart from other nations, mainly, and that is that we do like to talk and complain about the weather. There's a water point here. I'm going to quickly top up the tank. I only did it a week ago, but that's about as far as I like to leave it because I like to leave the, uh, the bow down on Aslan. Less chance of dragging. And also, she has a better profile in the water then. Right, 10 minutes or so to top the tank up and Hillmorton Locks, the first, is just down there. That's the water for another week and now into Hillmorton Locks and there's a boat just coming out. If I can just hover here and wait. Excellent timing. Perfect. And is that a volunteer up there? Yeah, I'm afraid you missed that lock because I got too busy talking to the uh, the volunteer lock keepers there. Ah oh, well, missing one lock isn't going to hurt, is it? This is a proper canal central. Now I'm told the left hand lock is out of action. Uh, somebody's boat put a hole in the gate. And there's a boat coming down so I'm going to get over. Been a while since I've done some locks. It takes a while to get back into the flow of it, you know? You know, you know! I feel like I'm in a trance. You can't really hear anything. You're not really concentrating, you're just floating through it. So uh, very strange. Something that monks have tried to achieve for centuries. If only they'd known about canal boating, eh? <laughs> 